summer. <laughs> All right. So um, thank you. Apologize for getting started late. I'm Senator Amy Volk, and welcome to the Citizens Trade Policy Commission. I'm going to begin with introducing ourselves. We do have a new member this afternoon, um, Tina Zabrick from Maine DEP. So we will begin with her after my esteemed co-chair has introduced himself. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, State Representative Bob Saucier, House Chair. I represent District 147 in Prescott. Good afternoon. My name is Tina Zabrick. I'm with the Maine Department of Environmental Protection. I'm John Palmer from Oxford, representing small business. I'm State Senator John Patrick from Rumford. I represent 30 towns and townships in western and <clears throat> northern Oxford County in the town of Livermore, Livermore Falls, and Androscoggin County. Hello, I'm Sharon Treat from Hollowell, and I rep represent environmental groups on the commission. Linda Pisner, Office of the Attorney General. Hello, I'm Randy Levesque. I represent Labor from Bath Ironworks, Local S6. Good afternoon. I'm Joel Case. I'm an emergency physician here in Central Maine, and I represent healthcare. Okay, thank you, everybody. <clears throat> and we are joined by Locke Kiermeyer, who is our staff um, for the CTPC. And Locke has brought us some letters regarding the Eastern Union ban on the importation of fresh fish. And then um, we have Chris Rector here from Senator King's office with some comments. And so, Locke, would you like to walk us through these letters? Yeah. Thank you. Just, just to briefly um, review this issue, at your last meeting, I believe it was April 6th, if I'm correct, um, you briefly discussed towards the end of the meeting this issue uh, regarding the importation of uh, fresh Maine lobsters into the U EU. And if I could summarize briefly, um, the country of Sweden, member of the EU, has objected to the continued importation of fresh lobsters from the United States, arguing that it's an invasive species. That's, that's the real short summary. During, and during your last meeting, you expressed an interest in finding out more about this issue and perhaps writing a letter regarding it. Um, Chris Rector from Senator King's office has been very helpful to us in providing us with up-to-date information about this issue and uh, a couple of pertinent pieces of information, some of which are in your packet and some of which I just received today, so it's in a pile loose aside from your packet. But on page one of your packet, you'll see a letter uh, to Secretary of State John Kerry, to USTR Michael Froman, and to Dr. Catherine Sullivan, who's the administrator, administrator for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And uh, this letter is from members of Maine's congressional delegation, uh, all four of them, Senator Collins, Senator King, Representative Poliquin, and Representative Pingree, um, stating the concern that the EU might be successful in banning uh, the importation of fresh lobsters, which of course they're vehemently opposed to and they don't think there's any legitimate scientific basis for doing so. Uh, on page three, you'll see the response to members to the main congressional delegation uh, from Julia Frithold, Frithfield, who's the Assistant Secretary for Legislative Affairs at the Department of State. I, and the way I would summarize that letter is simply acknowledging receipt of the letter that they're well aware of this issue and that they're constantly working to make sure that the ban, the EU ban on the importation of Maine lobsters doesn't occur. Uh, and then today, um, or last night, Chris Rector kindly sent me a bunch of other documents, probably more information than you really need, but it's, uh, you have it if you want it. And it's regarding the different evaluations, uh, con scientific evaluations, and the response both from the country of Sweden and from representatives of the United States. They're each making their argument 
The Swedish argument is that it is an invasive species, that it harms the European lobster. I forget the scientific name for it. And uh, of course, the American response is that this is totally unjustified. It's not an invasive species. There's no harm to the native European lobster. Um, my impression of this issue, and, and Chris can speak to you in a minute, my impression of this issue is simply that it uh, has not yet been resolved. It's not likely to till early fall from what I read, or perhaps earlier than that. And I think originally you had expressed an interest as a commission in perhaps writing to the USTR about this, this issue. In looking at this issue and learning more about it, it seemed to me that if you were to continue to want to write a letter, that it might be more precisely or appropriately addressed to whatever part of the European Union is dealing with this decision. That's my suggestion. So a letter has not been sent um, simply because I wasn't sure how you wanted to handle it. Um, and I think that's where we stand, but maybe Chris wants to either supplement or correct my remarks. No, I think you're, you're correct. Uh, thanks for come on, uh, come on over on the mic and introduce yourself. I Thank will you. do that. I'll take this <clears throat> Senator Volk, Representative Saucier, thank you for the invitation to be here. I'm Chris Rector. I, uh, I'm a regional representative for U.S. Senator Angus King uh, and actually work on in-state on fisheries issues for him as well. Um, I think Locke's done a good job of summarizing things. The truth is we may actually have a, uh, a uh, ruling from the uh, European Commission Scientific Forum and Scientific Committee uh, in the next, uh, well, possibly today or tomorrow or something, uh, which may mean that this is all uh, moot if we're fortunate. Uh, and they agree with, uh, with the more what I think is uh, reasonably accurate science that has been presented by uh, both the Canadians and the United States at this point uh, to try and refute what the Swedish scientists had presented in, uh, in a somewhat abbreviated and, uh, and uh, uh, self-benefiting uh, uh, editing of scientific fact, I think. It's a fair way to characterize it. Um, if uh, for some reason they decide to move forward with a ban, there would be a posting of that. There's a 60-day comment period and so on before anything happens. So we'd have an opportunity to weigh in at a later date. There's really no need for the uh, commission at this point to do anything. I don't think we've, we've done what we could both at a congressional level, at the State Department level, at the scientific level, through the university. The uh, 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 Bob Baer from the Lobster... Uh, Oh, what is he? The, uh, the Lobster Institute uh, at the University of Maine uh, weighed in uh, with scientific information as well. So we've had we've sort of covered it from the state side, uh, from the scientific community side, from the uh, federal delegation side, and I think uh, everyone's in uh, in uniform agreement. Uh, one of the things that benefits I th us, I think, is that uh, this is really viewed. I mean, I think. Uh, it would be fair to characterize it more as a, an opportunity to, uh, of trade protection on the part of the Swedish to try and sell more European lobsters, which are, frankly, less flavorful, less desirable, and less popular on the European uh, restaurant menus than American lobsters. So it was a chance to try and uh, improve their market share. Uh, hopefully, cooler heads will prevail and, uh, and we'll be okay in the, uh, in the end here. But we'll certainly know one way or the other soon and then try and make our case more effectively if there's any way to uh, going forward. Thank you. Does, <clears throat> did you have a question? I, I'm simply hoping that you'll let me know. I'll let you know happens. as soon as I know. Okay. Do any members of the commission have questions? Yes, a couple questions. <laughs> um, Linda, the doctor case had his hand up first. Oh, whoops. Sorry. That's odd. Um, just one quick one, which is this sheet that talks about the vote today or tomorrow um, about what is on the invasive alien which species species list. species could be included, yes. That's so would we not want to wait and see what happens with that before we send a letter? Oh, absolutely. That's what I suggested, is that you not yeah, do I'm anything until... Yeah, just trying until... to clarify. Yeah. Okay, good. Yep. <laughs> well, I think... Uh, which is which is what leads me to my question: uh, science fiction versus science. So, uh, do we have any legitimate data uh, that 
uh, suggests uh, anything about this truly being an invasive uh, species in their waters. Um, and or I guess the other question is do we have any data that that uh, supports the opposite uh, view I I think there is if if I mean you can read through some of the scientific information that's here it talks about the fact that uh, uh, the uh, Omaris Americanus does not uh, mate with European lobsters there's no evidence of any of the uh, uh, of common diseases between the uh, the um, American lobster and uh, and the uh, European lobster. There's, I mean, there's really no evidence that it's uh, that it's an issue. The, uh, I mean, the evidence that was cited initially was that they found a handful of these lobsters with uh, elastics around their claws. Now I don't know of any that have been uh, born that way, so I'd say that they were um, uh, possibly released by. Uh, uh, is it Mary Tyler Moore is the uh, is the uh, lobster uh, maven who thinks that we're cruel in uh, in cooking lobsters? I think maybe it's uh, maybe it was a plot by the uh, by the PETA folks to uh, to try and free some free some lobsters and create a controversy. I don't know. That's I'm making a joke. Quite frankly, <laughs> I uh, just want to be certain that nobody thinks I'm serious here. But yeah. I, I mean, what what are they suggesting that there's? Are they well, I think this is a this is an opportunity to try and secure a marketplace that they currently don't uh, don't have, uh, really. You know, it's the uh, it's the European lobsters that aren't as popular as. Are uh, they as suggesting that they've come? Well, they're crept across the Atlantic, <laughs> all the way to Sweden. <laughs> or they were or they were let out there. I think that they were let the out there. I think they were the released. Right, but even Swedish if they were forward. if they were released, like it says in one of the letters, it's yeah. that's a that's a different issue. Completely. Absolutely. So yeah. that's yeah. that's a law And not an invasive issue. species issue, right. I'd say. Right. Right. Yeah. Especially since they don't uh, they don't mate with European lobsters. I also read if Very I funny. could add in some of the documents that you sent to me that um, the North American lobster, I forget the Almost scientific term. Thank yep. you. Um, doesn't really survive in the European no, waters. That's right. Is a scientific fact. Yeah. So. so, as a follow-up, in terms of data, um, is there any uh, legitimate uh, market data uh, that supports uh, what you what you've suggested well. <laughs> uh, as the motive here? Uh, uh, I I don't know that there is, but I know. I mean, the American lobster is far more popular on the European menus. I think that's the market data that exists, Dr. Case. So, so is there data that actually supports that statement, that, uh, uh, the popularity of, of the American? I think there is. I think okay. the, uh, uh, I don't know whether the Lobster Institute would have, uh, would have sales data, but I'm, I, I suspect I that they would. I would expect yeah. that they would. Yeah. So, okay. And this impacts Canadian lobsters as well, by the way. It's same same species. So the Canadians and the Americans are in lockstep here. Great. Any other questions or comments? No. Mr. Palmer? It's been, it's been answered. Thank you. I'll keep Locke informed as to what that is. Yeah. Okay. So my only suggestion would be that if we, in the event that we things don't, the ruling does not come out in our favor, mm -hmm. I wonder if we might want to authorize Locke to send some sort of letter in that event. I think that's what we're poised to do mm -hmm. um, if we need to. And I'll, I'll keep, in, keep you informed right. based on what I learn. Okay. Because I think we would want to do that before our next meeting. <laughs> yeah. If necessary, we could do that. Yeah. Sharon? Yeah. On that point, I believe that at the last meeting we voted to authorize that already. Okay. So the authorization is there whenever I, it's I needed. Just, and frankly, I just didn't follow through on it deliberately because of the new information yeah. we had. No. Yeah. It made and sense. If I could just add, it's more of an anecdote, but uh, immediately following that meeting, I was in Europe and I got to meet with the deputy minister of the Swedish environment ministry, who did bring it up. I mean, I brought it up, but he did too, and he didn't really discuss it substantively. But um, anyway, it was in interesting. And I actually gave them some lobster memorabilia as a souvenir. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the State Museum to get <laughs> I figured, why not? <laughs> Put a human face on the issue. There you are. Thank you. Good, thank you.